Um, Exosol um, was founded 10 years ago now, actually. Um, it's been quite a long time. Um, we spent a lot of time developing the product and the technology that we have. Um, what we've created is a, a high-performance database management system, uh, which is actually the fastest in the world. There's a, an international benchmark which you can carry out. We've done that, we're going to do it again, and uh, we've proven that we actually have the fastest technology. Um, for a couple of years now, we've started concentrating on um, marketing and sales, and uh, becoming more and more successful, uh, convincing customers to give us their business critical processes, which is a um, hard work um, to get a large company to give a small company like us their, their processes. And uh, we're on a, a good path at the moment. Um, we have 42 people, at least half are in research and development, um, another five are in infrastructure um, and support the, the development team and the rest are in administration, sales and marketing. The motivation uh, originally was a university project. Um, a lot of uh, research and development had gone into parallel computing, massively parallel computing. Um, the founder at the time had uh, seen the situation coming that at one point we would have so much data that uh, transferring the data into a computing unit would take so long that um, it would be virtually impossible to do quick analysis. So um, we worked on uh, uh, combining several servers, uh, CPUs, to um, a single unit um, and carrying out the, the calculating processes in, um, in memory. So you use the RAM to carry out the calculation and that is just um, amazingly fast. So, um, this project was deemed to be uh, um, a good opportunity for, for business. So, uh, the idea came, so let's make a product out of this and go into the market. And that's what happened. One of our business angels has been here almost right from the beginning. The original idea, obviously, uh, arose from the university project. But um, you need money to start a business. So um, the, the connection arose pretty quickly to get some initial, uh, initial capital. To start the company, to hire people, you need office facilities, you need computers, um, you need to be able to pay your people. So uh, an initial amount of money or capital was raised from a business angel at that time. And uh, that's grown over the last years. Um, there's, there's one main business angel who came in very early. Um, I think he followed the situation for a certain amount of time to see where it was going. And then after a certain point where I was more convinced, I think, that uh, we were going places, he obviously is well connected. So there's a number of, a number of other business angels with whom he works on a regular basis. So he went to them over time when we needed new capital, fresh capital, and said, look, um, we're onto a good thing here, why don't you invest and uh, um, help the company move to the next stage. So I think it's kind of like a staged approach. It wasn't planned exactly that way, but that's the way it worked out, that um, over time, from this business angel network, new business angels came into the company and invested. Some more, some less. Um, through the Netzwerk buy-in. So this is a network which specializes in bringing business angels with uh, young entrepreneurs together. Um, they have um, competitions or the opportunity to help people who want to start business, how to set up a business plan, and they can uh, bring a business angel into this equation and uh, give them the opportunity to work together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the advantages of uh, having a business angel uh, uh, as an investor is that they've, all the business angels we have have got a lot of experience in building up their own companies, running a company, uh, and also in uh, getting new funds if needed. So, um, in my experience, um, we have a lot of situations where I can call up 
one of the business angels and say, look, um, the following situation has arisen, what's your opinion? And uh, I'll get a straight answer. And these people are always available for me. So it's very rare that I will call up and not get an answer. So I think the experience they have um, and the closeness to the company or the situation is very helpful. Uh, an institutional investor, you'll probably have someone who is responsible for picking up reports. And uh, they're not really that close to the business. So as you say, there maybe be monthly or quarterly meetings. Um, in our case, it wasn't organized at any specific time, but it was very close. There were a lot of phone calls, a lot of interaction. So, um, I mean, the situation now is the, the, the contact is every couple of days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what's happening there, what's happening here. Uh, I'll call up and say, by the way, this and that's happening, just so you know. Um, do you have an opinion on that? They'll call up and say what's happening there. They're very informed. And I think it's, it's um, something that our business angels have learned, that uh, you need to stay close to the business if you want to make your experience felt. And uh, obviously that depends on personalities. You might have managers who don't want that kind of contact every day, or well, it's not every day, but that kind of frequency. Um, but I think if the personalities get along well, then, uh, then it's no problem and I think it's a good thing. No, no, major shares. But which is something that happened over time. Uh, obviously the original investment was, uh, was a, a minority investment, but that's the, the, the name of the game. You need more money, you're just going to have to give up okay. some of your shares. But the, the, the calculation is, I think, uh, you would rather have, as the founder, perhaps even a, just a minority share in a company which is very valuable than a majority share in a company that isn't valuable at all. So you just have to work out the right balance. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think mistakes are made in every process. The important thing is that, that you learn from your mistakes. So although I might do the one or other thing slightly differently, on the whole I'll definitely repeat mm -hmm. the decision and go with a business angel or with business angels. I think what they need to do is, is, is certainly look ahead. They need to anticipate the questions that uh, an experienced businessman will, will ask. And, and you don't need all the answers, but you need to have thought about it. So, um, but I'd say that's true for any business. Uh, going into a dialogue with a, with a business angel should, um, should be a process in itself. As you said, the dis you asked me before how long the decision was. Um, the decision came quickly. But I think the initial dialogue of building up your business plan, finding out what, um, what kind of issues you need to address, that is a process which uh, takes a bit of time. And I think you need somebody who is able to advise you on uh, the kind of questions that will be asked, the issues you need to address, the ideas you need to have, the strategy, the vision, and... Um, you can do that before you get in contact with a business angel or you can do it in parallel because you need to understand there's a process. Nobody goes into this process perfect. What the aim should be is at the end of this process that you, you understand what you need to do in a, lot, in, in a better way. And um, I think uh, you just need to make the right decisions, talk to the right people. You need a lot of energy and a lot of... Uh, confidence in yourself, but then uh, if, if you've got that going, then I think a business angel is uh, the right way to go. Because with their experience, they can say, I see where you're going, but consider this, consider that, or don't do that. And that's the kind of advice you'll get from an experienced business angel. You won't get it from a bank, and you won't get it from an institutional investor. Yes, they did. and. Um, but it was misjudged at the time, how difficult our market was. That, that's a specific thing. The market we're in with the database management systems and business intelligence is not a new market. It's a market in which you have a number of big players. So I think um, the, the kind of time period to exit was underestimated. 
Um, yes, and uh, what was just as important, or even more important, was originally setting up the business plan. Because that's the kind of thing where, if you haven't done it before, you really don't know what, what, what belongs in there. And to have professionals who do this uh, on a regular basis, who can say, that's something you need to address, how much is that going to cost you? How much is that going to cost you? How long until you really get to a cash flow positive situation? That's something that needs a lot of thought and a lot of experience. And if you haven't done it before, you're not going to do a good job. So to have a network like that who can sit down with you and make sure you set up a decent business plan, I think that's very important. Going into the negotiations, obviously, as well, there are various ways of doing it. Um, you might have um, the kind of situation where a business angel thinks along US American terms and tries to do something which you can't do under German law. So you, you need a lot of experience in, in, in contract work so that you can get to the right kind of uh, result uh, with respect to the future relationship. Because obviously you don't just, business angel just does, doesn't give you the money and, and, and say, have fun. Um, <laughs> They want to make sure at a certain stage down the line they're going to get their return on investment. Uh, what happens at the next stage of financing? You know, how is their investment going to be um, treated? So um, that's something also where someone who has a lot of experience in these kind of things is going to be a big help. Or in fact is, is, is something you absolutely need.